Hey guys, it's Brian. I'm here to show you my Google Earth tour. Um, figured we'd meet up here, uh, flying over Western Oregon University's campus here. As you can see there's a little wolf icon there, pink on the road. Uh, but this is not the tour. This is just a good meeting spot. We're going to check out some volcanoes. That's the tour. So our first stop is going to be uh, a familiar site for many of you. It's Mount Hood. And uh, it's the tallest mountain in Oregon, 3,400 meters tall. Uh, had its last major eruption in 1782, but it's had some volcanic activity as recently as 1907. And uh, as we go through the tour here, um, I recommend clicking on some of these photos that are just uh, sprinkled through. Um, they, I'm not going to click on them. I'll just show you a couple here, but. I would recommend doing that as we go because it really adds a lot of great photos. You should check them out. There's also these icons. I added these icons. Uh, it just gives you a, just a very quick synopsis of, of the mountain. And then I also found these about halfway through making it. Is The Smithsonian has um, done a little more scientific, a little more thorough job of explaining the volcanic activity here on the mountain. So also a good resource. But, uh, so that's Mount Hood. It is part of the Cascade Volcanic Arc, which is part of another larger network of volcanoes that you may know called the Ring of Fire. So let's just check that out real quick. Now the Ring of Fire is, uh, it virtually surrounds the Pacific Ocean. It's hundreds of active and dormant volcanoes. And, uh, they're formed because of plate tectonics. Uh, subduction zones are created along the uh, borders of the continents here, and uh, this leads to not only increased volcanic activity, but also increased earthquakes as well. So we're just going to check out a few mountains or volcanoes that are in this zone. So the first one is Mount Osorno. And I picked this one because it's considered perhaps one of the most beautiful volcanoes in South America. And even here, just looking at the low res rendering in Google Earth, it just looks beautiful. Um, it's, uh, it's situated here uh, between Todos Los Santos and Yanquihu Lakes. I'm sure I'm not pronouncing that right, but um, and it just looks like a gorgeous a gorgeous place to go. It was formed 250,000 years ago on top of a stratovolcano. And let's move it on. Our next stop is Ojos del Salado. This one made the tour because it's the tallest active volcano, not just in the Ring of Fire, but in the entire world. At, uh, what is it? It's almost 6,900 meters tall. It hasn't erupted in recent times, but it's still considered active. Uh, there it is. It's in kind of a desert climate right here on the border of Chile and Argentina. But it does maintain a, uh, a crater lake, a small crater lake on it. And actually, it looks like uh, it would be a really fun climb if you were an adventurous mountain climber. Um, speaking of crater lakes, our next stop is a slightly more familiar spot for many people. Um, this is Crater Lake in Oregon. Um, not quite a volcano these days, but it was when it was formed 7,000 years ago. Um, it's basically what's left of the caldera of uh, Mount Mazama, which collapsed on itself and uh, created this 650 meter deep crater that's full of water now. Now it stayed a little active after it collapsed, which uh, helped create this island here, Wizard Island, you can see. It's got a little cinder cone on it. Uh, there's a couple others that didn't quite break the surface, but are down there. Anyway, it's the deepest lake in the country. Uh, no rivers flow into or out of it, so its water level is maintained entirely through evaporation and rain. So we'll continue heading north here. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, here's Mount Hood again. We'll just stop by and say hi on our way to our next destination which is Mount St. Helens. Mount St. Helens, of course, 
well known for its 1980 eruption that uh, reduced it from 2,900 meters high, 2,500 meters high, and left that big crater that you see right there. Now I will show you a couple pictures on this one because I think this is pretty cool. Uh, here's the before and after, basically, of the eruption. Quite a difference, as you can see. You can also see in that after photo that it's already starting to form, it's already starting to build itself back up there. So, um, next, we will fly all the way across the Pacific Ocean to Mount Fuji. Mount Fuji is a pretty well-known mountain. Um, it is considered a cultural heritage site in Japan, and I think you know it's probably pretty well known around the rest of the world as well. Around the land, you get it from all sides. It's pretty classic mountain-shaped. Um, it also is uh, perhaps the most climbed mountain in the world. Although, uh, there's some competition with Mount Monadnock over in New Hampshire. Um, it's a little unclear which one actually gets climbed the most, but they're both up there as the most climbed mountains in the world. This one's a little bit taller than Mount Monadnock, at uh, 3,700 meters tall. So now we'll just fly down here to our last mountain in East Java. It's Mount Kulud. I'm also not sure. Uh, <coughs> Excuse me, I'm also not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, not a remarkable looking mountain, but uh, it makes the tour because of how active it's been. In the last hundred years, it's erupted many times. In 1919, an eruption killed 5,000 people, and then it erupted again in 1966, 1990, 2007, and 2014. So they've all been pretty major eruptions. Uh, the 2007 eruption was interesting because scientists actually uh, put it on high alert about a month before it erupted. They said that an eruption, there was an impending eruption and they advised people to leave, which uh, some people did, some people didn't, some people left and came back because it was a month before it actually did erupt. Um, but sort of cool since scientists are so bad at predicting volcanic eruptions that there was a success story. So there you have it, quick tour of the Ring of Fire. Of course, there's hundreds of volcanoes that you could look at. Um, but those are just a couple, short sampling. Anyway, uh, I encourage you to look at some more. All right, bye.